Welcome to Lovejoy, where today we'd like to demonstrate the proper installation procedures for the Lovejoy standard S-Flex Endurance Spacer style coupling. This installation video will show the basic procedures for installing this coupling. Please make sure you have access to the latest copy of the Lovejoy Coupling Installation Guide when performing the installation of this coupling. This document can be found online at Lovejoy's website by visiting the Resources page and clicking on Installation Instructions and Videos. Prior to starting this installation, it is always important to ensure the equipment is in a safe and disabled state to prevent any accidental startup. Because of possible danger to the person working on the equipment, you should always consult all applicable federal, state, and local regulations covering the safe operation and maintenance of equipment. This includes, without limitation, the lockout tagout procedure defined by OSHA. The following components are provided with the purchase of your Lovejoy S-Flex Endurance Style Coupling. You should have two SC spacer flanges, two SCH spacer hubs, a sleeve, and hex head bolts and washers. Always inspect the components to ensure you've received the proper parts and coupling necessary to accommodate your application requirements. If the shaft and the hub both have keyways, make sure you have the appropriate key ready to use when performing this installation. Ideally, the key should be the same length or slightly longer than the hub to transmit the maximum allowable torque. It is always recommended to keep a copy of the specific coupling installation guide readily available when installing your Lovejoy coupling. The installation guide contains charts that show the necessary details including allowable coupling misalignment and torque settings for tightening the set screws and bolts. Some installation guides may contain performance and dimensional information, important when confirming the accuracy of the coupling selection. Let's look at the necessary tools we will need to perform this installation. A straight edge, calibrated torque wrench, Allen socket to fit the set screws, a socket for the hex head bolts, vernier calipers, lockout tagout kit, and safety glasses. Other recommended supplies you might need include a dial indicator, a gap micrometer, a micrometer to confirm the shaft sizes, a fine tooth file, a strip of emery paper, non-flammable cleaning solvent, a clean cloth, and rubberized gloves. Even though we have disconnected the power to this system, it is always a good idea to check and ensure that the power is off. When you receive the coupling, you should inspect each component to ensure that there are no visible defects, cracks, or damage from shipping. You may want to check the bore size for accuracy prior to continuing with the installation. If not done already, you should measure the shaft and ensure that the shaft diameter matches the coupling bore size. Then inspect the shaft and clean up any nicks or burrs from the keyway or shaft diameter. A fine tooth file can be used to clean burrs from the edge of the keyway or large dents in the shaft. The emery paper can be used to clear the shaft of rust or any fretting corrosion. Finally, using our cloth and cleaning solvent, we need to ensure the surface of the shaft and keyway are clean and free of dirt. The hub and flanges should also be cleaned to remove any coatings used to protect them during shipping. Besides spanning shaft separations greater than the standard S-Flex Endurance coupling, an additional feature of the S-Flex Endurance Spacer coupling is that the spacer flange and sleeve can be installed as a dropout subassembly. This means the equipment does not necessarily need to be moved to install a coupling. We will take advantage of this benefit and install this coupling with the equipment already in place. Before installing the spacer hub, place the key in the keyway on the shaft. The key should fit snugly into the keyway with no side-to-side -side movement. The end of the key should line up with the end of the shaft and the spacer hub once the hub is installed. 
insert the four bolts with lock washers through the spacer hub starting opposite the piloted end of the hub. It is important that the bolts are installed in the spacer hubs prior to being placed on the shafts. Due to possible equipment obstructions or issues with shaft sizes, there may not always be enough room to insert the bolts once the spacer hubs are mounted on the shafts. Slide the spacer hub onto the shaft lining up the end of the piloted surface with the end of the shaft and the key. Lovejoy manufactures these spacer hubs with a clearance or slip fit and the hub should slide onto the shafts with little or no difficulty. With a calibrated torque wrench, tighten the set screws in the first hub using the torque specified for spacer hubs in the installation guide. The use of a torque wrench is important. If the set screws are not tightened properly, the spacer hub and flange could work loose and slide on the shaft. For now, we will leave the set screws on the second spacer hub loose to allow us to move the hub to clear the pilot when installing the center subassembly. Place the sleeve between the spacer flanges with one flange located on each end of the sleeve. With the vernier calipers, check the overall width of the subassembly. Then measure the distance between the faces of the spacer hubs to make sure this separation roughly matches the width of the center dropout assembly. Lift the center subassembly into place between the two spacer hubs. The pilot on the spacer flange should seat easily into the pilot recess in the spacer hub. Rotate the subassembly until the holes in the flange line up with the holes and bolts in the spacer hub. Start threading the spacer bolts into the flange and hand tighten. Slide the second hub towards the subassembly so that the flange seats in the pilot on the hub. When snug, lightly tighten one set screw in this hub. Rotate the flange until the tapped holes in the flange line up with the bolts in the hub and hand tighten the spacer bolts. Each spacer bolt should be tightened evenly using the industry standard procedure. With a calibrated torque wrench, Tighten each bolt first to 50% of the specified torque, then 75%, then to the final torque as specified in the installation guide. To check the basic alignment, start by laying a straight edge across the major diameter of the flanges. The maximum allowable parallel offset should not exceed the amount for your particular coupling size found in the installation guide and shown here. Using the calipers, measure the distance over the outside faces of the flanges as close as possible to the edge of the flange. Again, if space permits, it is recommended to take this measurement at four different locations around the coupling, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, and 12 o'clock. All of the measurements should fall within the range of X min and X max on the chart shown here. The maximum difference between any of these measurements should not exceed the value listed in the column labeled angular. Note that the angular misalignment should not exceed one degree for EPDM and neoprene sleeves or a quarter of a degree for hydrol sleeves. If the alignment falls outside these parameters, you may need to move the second hub or realign the equipment to correct this condition. With the alignment check completed, we can now tighten the set screws in the second hub to the torque specified in the installation guide. When the installation is complete and the equipment is aligned to meet specifications, remove tooling and material away from the shafting and coupling. Double check the set screw and spacer bolt tightness, then prepare for testing. Install the appropriate coupling guard per OSHA requirements and remove the lockout tagout kit from the power supply. Equipment can then be started up and tested. The coupling and equipment should run smoothly. If vibration is detected, it could indicate that there is an issue with alignment or other problems. These could exist in the motor, coupling, or driven equipment and should be resolved prior to placing this coupling into operation. This concludes this particular installation video.
We would like to thank you for your interest in Lovejoy Power Transmission products. Please feel free to visit the Lovejoy website for links to other videos and installation guides. You can also contact Lovejoy Customer Service at 630-852-0500. Lovejoy, building trust since 1900.